This is the Sunshine Cathedral perspective. Why are so many United Methodist congregations leaving the denomination over LGBTQ plus issues? Hundreds of congregations of the United Methodist Church voted to leave the denomination and remaining congregations have just a few weeks left to decide whether to leave or stay amid the schism over same-sex marriage and LGBTQ plus clergy, furthering a theological divide that has split up some of the largest Protestant churches in the United States in recent years. Congregations have until the end of 2023 to split from the UMC. Four years after the United Methodist Church decided to allow churches to disaffiliate from the denomination over the conflict within the church regarding homosexuality, 261 of the nearly 700 congregations from the UMC's North Georgia Conference have opted to leave so far. The last time so many denominations underwent schisms was in the 19th century when some denominations split over slavery. Tensions over LGBTQ plus issues have also taken hold in the Catholic Church, which has been increasingly criticized by conservatives over the leadership of Pope Francis, who is perceived as more welcoming to the LGBTQ plus Catholics than his predecessors. In July 2013, Francis famously asked, quote, If a person is gay and seeks God and has good will, who am I to judge? Unquote. He has since supported civil unions for same-sex couples and said that God loves gay Catholics, though he has reaffirmed traditional church teachings that marriage is between a man and a woman and homosexual acts are sins. <clears throat> there was a running thread in this story, the word conservatives, <laughs> conservatives, <laughs> conservatives, <laughs> conservatives. Um, this stuff began in 2019 when the conservatives said that the, the church should have never given the right to include LGBTQ queer people in the conversation. And it, it's, again, conservative. And we talked about how many in North Georgia? 6,000 churches, 6,000 United Methodist churches were thinking about disaffiliating with um, their church. Now, where are some of them going? There is a brand new global Methodist church that started last year where the conservatives are flocking to. That's nice in numbers. And I always come back to the question of why are people so afraid of affirming and accepting everyone as they are? In this world, there are many, many different people. We have many, many different ways of living. And for a one group to say that we are not worthy of being loved by God, that's not what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is not the lessons that um, our rabbi Jesus taught. So to go back to any of that craziness means that you are afraid one more time of giving up some power, some control, yeah, yeah. some ability to tell people mm -hmm. what to do, how to do it, and why to do it. And, and that, that so many churches, so many people within the churches are moving closer and closer to a belief that we are all created by God in God's image just the way we are. Right. And we hear, and it's a quote that I've heard before where people say, there go the people, I must catch up so that I may lead. <laughs> right. No, you're not going to be able to catch up with this because in your heart you don't believe that we are all equal mm -hmm. and therein for me lies the <clears throat> basic problem. Right. Yeah. You're, and that's the problem of making your what's good for you is about who and what you're against. Uh, you know, I'm against, you know, we, we can't let people take communion if they've been divorced or, you know, whatever, or, or if you're of another denomination or all, all of these, all of these rules about how you are bad, how you are not good enough. 
Well, th- th- there's always going to be schism. There's always going to be division because you've got to keep out the riffraff. <laughs> but that's not, that's not good news. Yeah. You know, when Jesus says, let the children come to me, nobody was more powerless or more overlooked than children. They had no authority. They had no power. They had no agency. They were to be seen and not heard. You could beat them. You could sell them into slavery. You could marry them when they were barely a teenager. Children didn't have, they were people really. Chattel. And they were just chattel. And for Jesus to say the weakest, the least powerful, the most uh, socially insignificant uh, among us, let them come to me, that is an open door policy. That is the people that other people overlook or look down on or, or disregard or mistreat, let them come to me. Well, that's queer folks, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. queer folks, y'all. Let them come to me. So it's, it's, it's disturbing to me that people would rather leave and you know, just moving house. I mean, it's uh, moving. If you move from one apartment to the next, it's a big deal. It's a pain that people would rather move their lives, their congregations, fight over property. Uh, they would rather leave than include. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How tragic is that? How tra- now, we don't all have to agree with each other. I can still think divorce isn't a great thing and you've been divorced five times, but I would rather there be divorce than people stuck in, in unsafe right. marriages right. Or, or, or stuck in a lie. You know, I, I married you and then I found out you're not who I thought you were. Well, I should stay with you now. I don't know. Maybe not. So yeah, divorce and divorce is bad in the church because the Bible says it is, but it doesn't say that yeah. in the old Testament. You're told to divorce. Don't just leave your wife hanging, uh, give her, divorce her. So she'll be free. That's Moses. Jesus says, I say, unless she's been cheating on you, don't divorce at all. Why did Jesus say that? Because divorced women in Jesus' time were like the little children. Mm. They had no agency. They had no status apart from a man. So unless she's done you wrong, you're doing her wrong by leaving her without income and home and status. Don't do that. Okay, that isn't saying stay in an unhealthy and unhappy marriage. That's saying if for some reason it falls apart, pay your child support. Don't leave people helpless and and, and abandoned and, and struggling while you go on to your new fabulous life. Uh, these things, but Jesus said, and so without any context or without any analysis, any social analysis, we're just going to make people miserable. And they do that with the gay thing. They do that with the trans thing. They mm-hmm. do that with the divorce thing. They do that uh, with the abortion thing. They do that with, with inter, uh, 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 faith marriages, inter-religious marriages. They do that in all these things um, because they got a verse somewhere. <laughs> I can torment you because I'm more faithful to it. Do you know I had family? We had family come to our wedding several, many years ago, and we were so pleased that our, we didn't know they would. We were surprised we had family come. We also had family that didn't. Mm. And, uh, and I don't know uh, his, I think, Clemmy Busy or whatever, but I had a, a close relative who, who his, his children came, but he didn't come uh, because his church said, yeah. you know, he was just worried about it. He, he was afraid that his presence would be a, 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 a an endorsement. Okay. An endorsement. An endorsement yes. It'd be an endorsement. Yeah. And he just couldn't do that. Rather than share our moment of joy, rather than say, I'm so glad you have each other and you're so happy, and decades later are still at it, he had a he had a verse or he had he had a little doctrine. Yeah. He had a little he had a little mm-hmm. thing. And he missed out on a really beautiful wedding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was. You it know, was, it was a beautiful wedding. And he could have been there the whole time sitting in his head, I don't get it. You but, know. Yeah. But <laughs> what a nice party, yeah. Yeah. you know, yep. but no, they had to make a statement that my little prejudice, my little opinion is more important than your happiness in your life. That's what the church has done. And that's why the church needs to repent. Uh, the church has committed the sin of dehumanizing and demoralizing and demonizing people. Yep. And that's why churches are splitting and that's why churches are dying. Mm-hmm. And that's why families are being torn apart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why crazy people are being elected to powerful positions uh, where they can unleash their terror. It's all because people have misused and misapplied the church. Yes. They've weaponized the church. And this is what you get. Right. No, why are so many Methodist congregations leaving because of this LGBTQ issue? It's control, mm-hmm. it's power, it's my interpretation. And if my interpretation doesn't agree with your interpretation, or if you want to include somebody that maybe I think shouldn't be included, we're going to split. Now, all of us at this table know very well that many denominations are starting that decline. Mm. Yes. Say what they want to, denominations are starting to decline. If you insulate, yes. if you exclude people, and if you insulate it's not going to be warm. It's not going to be welcoming. And that's not what they want anyways. So they're going to exclude who they want. It's sad. Um, but nowhere in the Bible that I can recall, 
correct me if I'm wrong, does it say that the self-righteous shall appear? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nowhere. Nope. No, 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 that ain't going no. there. No. 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 I could fact, be wrong, but I don't think In fact, they get, they, get, they get dinged a few times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And this is historical, though, uh, in the United States. And the last time this happened, it was in the 19th century, and it was in the right. South, mm -hmm. the Southern, the Methodist Episcopal Church South, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which later had to, to unite with the, with the other branches and with the United Brethren to become the United Methodist Church, which is now splitting. Right. But th they were they were separate Methodists to begin with. There was the Methodist Episcopal Church South, there were the Southern Presbyterians, there were the Southern Baptists, and they were all different, separated in their Southernness so that they could uh, protect uh, the, the evil institution of slavery. They they were they were separate to exclude. They were separate to yeah. oppress. They were separate to uh, dominate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, this is in their DNA. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm -hmm. And I just think that these churches and any other churches who happen to, to look at this need to really consider repenting from the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. Ah. As long yeah, as they very understand good. what, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. what yep. it is, they yep. need, these churches need to repent of the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah because this is about not welcoming people Some into the house of faith. Yep. My house shall be a well house done, of you. prayer for all okay. people. Yep. And who are you to determine mm. who's in and who's out? Yep. You need to repent of the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, yeah, and, the, and that is the sin, uh, uh, Ezekiel mm -hmm. uh, said it himself. Yes. That that was the sin, that you, that, uh, that, that yes. you were fat while you left other people hungry and, and you, you didn't let people in, you didn't welcome the stranger, which is the whole thing. That's Remember the, these things uh -huh. come, yeah. they, you know, and they, yeah. and they're attacked and they leave. And that's the sin, yeah, is that, not that, yeah, it's not. There's no romance in that story. Right. <laughs> there's, there's no, no one's on a date. In fact, it ends in incest, which isn't yes. condemned mm -hmm. in the story, uh, when Lot and his daughters. But yeah, no, you. That's the sin of Sodom. People showed up, and you and you were ugly. You yep. were mean. You were evil. Yeah. You were violent. You had to vote on them. You have to decide if they can be in your choir. You have to mm. decide if they can be on your board of directors. You have to decide if they can be your preachers, your rectors, your pre. Really. And then came the lightning. Twenty. <laughs> 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 that needs to be a revival of churches repenting from the sin of, of, of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, it's there just, you go. It's boggling to me to think that we are supposed to be the place that's open to everybody, not all behavior, but open to all people. And yet, this is the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah to me. Get get yourselves right. Folks. That'll make an Anglican shout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Good. Next up, we are excited to tell you about our next adventure with our global fellowship. In 2024, we'll be going where the hills are alive as we explore Austria and Alpine Europe for Gay Oktoberfest. Space is extremely limited, so make sure to go to happeningout.travel/sunshine to reserve your space now.